Live from KTTC, your weather authority, this is KTTC News Today. In the news on this Tuesday morning, chaos in Kabul continues. What local veterans are saying about the deadly withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan. Plus, students at Byron schools will not be required to wear face coverings this fall. That decision has many parents feeling divided. And getting Rochester kids excited for learning again. We're going to look ahead to this year's back to school rally that's happening today. Should be great weather mm -hmm. for that. So, hey, let's get right to the good news. Another <laughs> beautiful day. Ted's joining us here at the, the desk to tell us more. Yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal day. All they could really hope for for mm -hmm. that rally. And, and uh, looks like a great example of August weather is headed our way. We've had uh, about, what, four of those in a row, five in a row. Uh, great August days as we look now uh, southward on South Broadway. That's live from our Lewis Auto camera right now. On the weather patio, 63 degrees is a gentle south breeze, 2.55. So not much mugginess to speak of, at least not so far. That will change uh, maybe in a couple days' time. But right now, looking at showers well to our west, they will hold off for about three more days. Temperatures right now, very comfortable, crisp, cool, uh, eh, typical maybe late August, early September in some cases. 57 right now officially at the Rochester International Airport, 53 in Osage, Mesa City 55 and 59 in Winona. Here's our dog walking forecast, Penny from Rochester. And uh, boy, yeah, you think our weather was from heaven, pennies from heaven. All right, so they have some sunshine, 82, uh, gentle breeze, tons of sun, not much humidity. Boy, you couldn't ask for much more uh, of this for a mid-August day. Ultraviolet index forecast uh, on the high side next couple of days, but nothing unusual there. So about 25, 30 minutes to a burn if you were to keep track of that type of thing. 82, plenty of sunshine today, a little bit of a south breeze, and that's just a little warmer than the last couple of days in the building on that. Uh, we'll see maybe more 80s in the coming days, but Great looking Tuesday for the time being. I always appreciate your daily reminder to wear our sunscreen. <laughs> Good idea. Thanks, Ted. Well, the Taliban is now in full control of Afghanistan. President Biden says he's surprised by the collapse as American forces initially moved out of the region, but that the Afghan military is to blame. However, Republicans are pointing the figure at or the finger rather at the administration for what they call an epic failure. Many Democrats are also expressing concern. NBC's Jay Gray has a closer look at the situation. Hey there, good morning, Kelsey. Good morning, Jess. And the situation remains tense, very dangerous right now. It's one that brings with it powerful and painful memories and questions for so many who served on the front lines in Afghanistan over the last 20 years. This morning, U.S. officials and embassy staff continue to rush out of Afghanistan. American troops providing security in the chaos at the Kabul airport. Tens of thousands of Afghans flooding the tarmac, desperate to escape, with the Taliban now in full control of the capital and the country. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. President Biden speaking publicly for the first time since the takeover vigorously defends his decision to pull U.S. troops from the region, blaming Afghan security forces for the collapse. It is wrong to order American troops to step up when Afghanistan's own armed forces would not. Republicans arguing the administration had no plan in place for the Americans still on the ground. He has to take responsibility and accountability for his own actions, which have led to this unmitigated disaster, as I called it, of epic proportions. It is an absolute disaster. The political finger pointing doesn't really matter to retired Navy SEAL sniper Steve Brown. I'm, I'm struggling, to be honest. Haunted by memories of his time on the front lines as he watches the Taliban reclaim control. All my brothers that, you know, paid the ultimate sacrifice there, it was, uh, it was just really hard to see everything undone, like, so fast. After two decades of sacrifice and overwhelming loss, the president says a U.S. security team, at least 6,000 troops, will remain in place for as long as necessary to complete the evacuations. In Washington, Jay Gray, KTTC News. Well, local veterans are reacting to the turmoil. With the end of the 20-year war in Afghanistan, former service members here say history is repeating itself. Some tell us they wished for a different outcome. Others say they're unsure what good came from the decades-long war. Many say the chaotic exit happening right now compares to the Vietnam retreat in 1975. Kind of reminds you of Saigon, the way they uh, 
had to put the helicopters on the embassy. And it's reminiscent of what happened in Vietnam. We left a lot of good people behind, people who had helped us, uh, people who became endangered, you know, because of the fact that we left them behind. And I feel it's the exact same, same thing here in Afghanistan. I feel that we are watching the death of a nation before us right now. And when President Biden addressed America, he did admit Afghanistan's collapse unfolded more quickly than his administration had anticipated. Meanwhile, the military could be relocating tens of thousands of Afghans looking to live in the U.S. According to the Pentagon, the Department of Defense may move up to 30,000 of them, with many going to Fort McCoy in Wisconsin. The Afghans applied for special immigrant visas, many of them worked with the U.S. during the war and say they will likely be targeted now that the Taliban's taken control of the country. The Defense and State Departments confirm that they will accelerate the applicants' evacuation. The Department of Homeland Security says it is working to push visas through the system and get applicants cleared through security. Well, right now, the U.S. Coast Guard is in Haiti helping medical personnel and injured residents in the aftermath of Saturday's deadly and disastrous earthquake. Aid is struggling to reach the most affected areas, though, as some roads are impassable. The 7.2 earthquake killed at least 1,400 people, leaving more than 6,000 injured. It's the worst quake to strike Haiti since 2010. In a city like Rochester that is famous for its medical care, that we should um, err on the side of keeping people the healthiest and the safest. Mayor Kim Norton making it clear she's ready to bring masks back to Rochester. The mayor says she is planning to sign a new executive order on the matter for the city as early as this morning. Yeah, the mandate says people will be required to wear face coverings where children are present. Megan Zempel is joining us live in the studio this morning with more on this exclusive interview with the mayor. Good morning. Good morning, Jess and Kelsey. A masking mandate could be headed to the city of Rochester as early as this morning. Mayor Kim Norton tells us in an exclusive interview that she gave Rochester City Council the heads up that she will most likely sign an executive order for a mask mandate this morning. She says it would be for indoor settings when children 12 and younger are present or expected to be present. Norton expressed concerns over rising cases in Olmstead County amid the Delta variant. It's about doing what's right for our community, and I, it, my goal is always to have everyone on board, but when life and health are at risk, you can't just say, I want to wait, I want to wait, I want to wait, or you'll never make a decision. I'd rather err on the side of caution and ask people to just, you know, have a little discomfort, wear a mask um, for for the foreseeable future until that those numbers come down. And of course, we can't predict when that will be, but it sounds like it, not, not in the near future. Once signed, the executive order will last for three days. And after that, it's up to the city council's approval. Norton says city council members have a wide range of opinions on a mask mandate. Some are in favor of one, and some say city government shouldn't control, have so much control over people's lives. Stay with us as we will continue to keep you updated on this. Jess? Thank you, Megan. A big decision for Byron Public Schools, the board voting 6-1 to one to make wearing masks optional for all children in classrooms this year. The district's COVID plan is set to only recommend wearing face coverings with some extra pro protocols built in on certain occasions, and that includes wearing masks for 10 days after a positive test, requiring masks on buses, and contact tracing after exposure. The decision brings mixed reaction from parents. The only thing that can protect these little kids are hand washing, social distancing, and masks until we have a vaccination out that can protect them. It's literally the only thing that can protect them. And it also, it promotes in-person learning. Other parents cheering on the decision as one woman would like for her children to have the choice. I don't believe somebody's fear should make a choice for me on what I want to do with my child. Um, last year, I wasn't very happy with the school, but again, that's what the recommendations were and mandates were, so we had to follow them at that time. Now there's no, there's no mandates, so we don't have to, there's no loss. There, there's no laws, so we don't have to follow what they're saying. Passion, drive, 
Well, happening today, a decision on whether or not face coverings will be required at Rochester schools this fall. The Board of Trustees will be discussing its safe return to learning plan during its meeting today at 5.30. Interim Superintendent Dr. Kent Pickell's plan includes uni universal masking and social distancing of three or more feet inside campus buildings. He's also asking staff and volunteers to report their vaccination status as well as having vaccine clinics at school sites with Olmstead County Public Health. For a closer, closer look at the full proposal, just head to KTTC.com and click on this story. Also happening today, the annual Back to School Rally. The free event is going on from 4 to 7 p.m. at Soldiers Memorial Field. There will be a dunk tank, free haircuts, a photo booth, face painting, and more activities to get kids back into the school spirit. And the first day of classes begins Monday, August 30th. Switching gears here, we're learning more about a mobile home fire that happened in Stewartville. Olmster County investigators believe it may have started from an electric smoker by the front porch of the home. It happened about 2 Monday morning on 22nd Street Northwest. The front half of the mobile home was engulfed in flames when firefighters arrived. We're told those living there were able to get out safely. First responders also evacuated some neighboring homes. New details surrounding a deadly Rochester crash from last February. The victim's family is now filing a wrongful death lawsuit against the drunk driver and the bar that served him alcohol. 18-year-old Erica Cruz was killed when a drunk driver named Sterling Hawkham crashed into her car. The $55,000 lawsuit alleges that the 63 Club bar, quote, unlawfully sold intoxicating beverages to Hawkeum when he was obviously intoxicated, end quote. He did admit to police that he had more than 15 drinks and was speeding. He crashed into Cruz just two blocks from her home. She died from her injuries. Hawkeum's criminal trial is set to start later this month. It's 541. We're just one week, over one week away from my favorite time of the year, the Minnesota State Fair. Kelsey has been waiting. This <laughs> is probably one of the reasons she moved back to Minnesota. Hundreds of employees, though, are still needed to make it happen. We're going to take a look at that story after we check in with Chad on this Tuesday morning. Beautiful fair weather day. We have some sunshine already going on right now. We have mild temperatures that will stick around. We are looking at more heat, more humidity in the coming days. And eventually over the weekend, may encounter some thunder. Latest in your forecast is coming up after the break.